Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back again to The Correct Views. Um, I want to make it official. Um, we're working with PNC Bank um, to set up the account for my father's disability fund. Uh, many of you that listen to this show know that I'm no f a huge fan of banks, but they have been very reasonable, and it looks like that should be going up soon. Also, all donations to this show have stopped. All donations that you send to me um, go directly to my father's um, cancer account. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we are saving money uh, to about $20,000, which in terms of cancer treatment actually is very reasonable, to send him to Hanover, Germany for a treatment called hyperthermia. Uh, look up Dr. Peter Wolf. Uh, more on that once I'm able to get it up. On to the news. Walmart workers threaten nationwide a Black Friday walkout. I'm wearing this shirt. You knew, didn't you? You knew. Donna Anderson, Infowars.com. More than 200 workers from 28 Walmart stores in 12 different cities walked off the job on Tuesday, only the second multi-store strike in Walmart history. Good, they need more. Converging on the annual investors meeting being held in Walmart's hometown, Bentonville, Arkansas, the group issued the following ultimatum. Stop retaliating against workers trying to organize or Black Friday 2012 will indeed be one for the record books. Um, and they're supported by some frightening people like the National Organization of Women, you know, nags. Uh, yes, it's stolen from Rush, but it's so true. Um, the National Association of Gals, one of the only funny things. I know, you know what? When Rush isn't yammering on about neoconservatism, he's actually very intelligent. Anyway, the nags are behind him, but look. Walmart pays their employees almost nothing, and they don't even, in some instances, have access to clean drinking water, which uh, I'm sure that's not every store. But here's, here's the gist of the story. Walmart pays these employees so little that almost all of them are on food stamps or welfare or something like that. Well, what that has done is made it so that Walmart can pay almost nothing knowing that Joe, the uh, taxpayer, you and I, are going to end up paying the difference when we make sure that we pay into the charities and the taxes that become welfare. Do you see how Walmart is costing you money. When you spend money at Walmart, you are costing yourself money. You are not saving yourself money. So what they are trying to do is get basically better treatment and um, they're asking people not to shop on Black Friday. But this is the correct views and I have a different take. I say it'll hurt Walmart more if you go in on Black Friday but try only choose the stores that have the strike going on. Now stay with me. Because I hate Walmart, so I'm not sticking up for them. This has a point here. Go to Walmart. And ask, and make sure it's, again, a Walmart that is on strike. And ask as many questions from as many Walmart employees as you possibly can. Tie them up and make the strike that the people are doing even more noticeable. Even more deadly, so to speak. Now, not real deadly. Not some idiot. I mean, you know what I mean. Um, and then when you leave, pick the longest line that you can find and buy a pack of bubblegum. Tie the store up horribly. Now, this is not going to work for you know, some of you parents that are shopping on Black Friday, but a lot of people like me, I really don't shop on Black Friday. I don't see the point. I'll go there if there's some great deal and I think I might be able to duck in and duck out somewhere, but I really don't shop that way. But I'll be going to Walmart if they strike near me. And I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to ask questions and ask this and that. And then I'm going to wait in line and buy like a pack of bubble gum. God willing, I think that is the best way to put the screws to a company who has definitely put the screws to the United States. For those of you that don't know, real quick, among other things, do um, you want to know why when you buy an RCA unit at Walmart, and I don't know if it's really RCA, but a name brand unit at Walmart and it dies right away, you want to know why that is? It is because if RCA or X company doesn't 
dumb down their product. Maybe a piece gets soldered twice when it's a uh, name brand. For Walmart, it only gets soldered once. That is so that they can get their products in there. Of course, they're going to break down even sooner, and Walmart actually leads to that problem as well. Not to mention supporting every piece of Chinese garbage that has outsourced and destroyed the United States of America. Um, on to other news, Monsanto's Fading Grasp group calls on South Africa to ban a GMO corn. This is from Infowars.com. Let me tell you something. This, this, is, this is wonderful, wonderful news. Because among other things, Walmart selling genetically modified food. So many places do. And there have been even like Whole, Whole Food stores is tied up in a scandal now where they are selling GMO. Um, if you don't know, there has been studies that just came out, and I've reported on this on my channel, just look it up, um, monster tumors on rats from the f food that you and I buy at Walmart and uh, Target and wherever, uh, the, the corn that's in the cereal, in your cereal bars, that kind of thing. Following in the footsteps of nations like France and Russia, South Africa may soon be the latest nation to enact a ban on Monsanto GMO corn that was recently linked to tumor development and organ damage in rats. South Africa's African Center for Biosafety, a watchdog organization that was created to protect consumers from various biotechnology dangers, is now calling on a South African authorities to enact a ban on Monsanto's tumor linked maize crops known as NK603. This is important. You need to stand up, even if, even if you believe that we need genetically modified food to feed ourselves, which we do not, um, even if you believe that, don't you think you at least have a right to know what is in it? They are fighting against even that. Um, the more we stand up for ourselves, the more we will have this labeled, ultimately the more we will have Monsanto out of our food, and as that happens, you will see things like cancer, some of the rates will go back down. Look up. The charts show the cancer rates in proportion to genetically modified food, and if you don't know what that is, you are eating it. I promise you, unless you're eating all organic, you are eating it. Um, Romney's first project with Bain in 1977 helped propel Monsanto, uh, S.D. Wells in Natural News. One year before Mitt Romney began working on the Bain and Company project to build Monsanto and cast their new image and focus on agriculture biotechnology, Congress passed a bill banning a PCB, which is polychlorinated biphenyl, an odorless, tasteless, clear liquid known to cause cancer that has the bread and butter of Monsanto's profits. Monsanto was already branded and plagued with the label of having created the Agent Orange contaminated dioxins used in Vietnam. Now, I know a lot of people listen to the correct views and they don't know what the hell I just said. Monsanto is a company that made Agent Orange. Agent Orange was the orange fog-like thing um, that was used to hide soldiers getting in and out of helicopters and whatnot to, to make it hard for them to shoot. It's very hard to shoot at somebody when they're in fog. Unfortunately, this was not fog. This was a carcinogen. This company makes Roundup Weed Killer, and a variant of that is grown in almost all of the food that you and I eat. Romney supported Monsanto. Why is that important? Because almost everybody in the Obama administration that has anything to do with food is from Monsanto. Once again proving that there is no difference between these two candidates. So what do you do? Do you not vote? No, that's a ridiculous idea. Um, all gov. Why are there only two candidates in the presidential debates? Last thing I want to get to this evening. It's only natural for the Democratic incumbent Barack Obama and Republican challenger Mitt Romney should participate in the presidential debates, but in fact there are, only, there are two other candidates who are qualified for the ballot in enough states that they could technically win the election. Gary Johnson of the Libertarian Party is on the ballot in all of 48 states, and Dr. Jill Stein of the Green Party is on 39 state ballots. In a pure democracy, it would be considered a given that Johnson and Stein would join Obama and Romney on stage, but the United States elections do not work that way. Now, the Green Party candidate, with all due respect, Jill Stein, 
well, she is Obama on steroids, politically speaking. You think it's bad now, it'll be much worse then. We'll be tacked, in, tacked into utter oblivion. Uh, Gary Johnson, however, is polling at over 6% nationally. He was over 10% in Ohio in a recent poll. What this means is the federal matching funds that the Libertarian Party is going to get, and I do a whole piece on this on how to elect a third party people, this is how it's done, and uh, we can do it. If, if we all band together, we can do this, and we can make it in 2016 where there is a huge buildup just by voting for Gary Johnson this year. You know, and who knows? I mean, Abraham Lincoln wasn't supposed to win the election, and he did. Do I think Johnson's going to? No. Um, but do I think he has a better shot than any other libertarian has had? Yes. And do I think that voting for him is going to propel the 2016 libertarian to heights not seen in a third party, including Perot? Yes, I believe that as well. Um, to qualify for the debates, candidates must have demonstrated a level of support of at least 15% on the national electorate as determined by five selected national public opinion polling organizations using the average of those organizations' most recent public or reported results. Of course, it's almost impossible to earn the support of 15% of the electorate if you don't have regular access to network television or the debates themselves. That is why voting for Johnson matters because you are going to get him access to network television if he polls at 6% on election day, when either Obumney or Romney Dumney get in, um, if he gets 6% of the vote, in 2016 they will have so much money that it won't matter if you put them in the debates or not. As I have said before, they will be unstoppable because he'll have 6%. That's millions of dollars. Gary Johnson has done this with the half of 1% money that he got from us that voted for Barr. This is huge, people. It is huge. For those of you that don't know what I was talking about, voting for Johnson now makes it so you may be hearing as much of the libertarian candidate, third-party candidate, in the 2016 elections as you are hearing about Obama and Romney now. You are listening to The Correct Views. Please donate. We are trying to uh, literally save my father's life here. Thank you. Good night. God bless people. Keep listening and keep sharing these videos because we can stop all of these things if we stick together and inform each other. Good night. God bless.